Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about Ohm's Law, one of the most important relationships or formulas we're going to use as we study electrical circuits. Our objective is going to be to define and calculate resistance, current, and potential difference using Ohm's Law. Resistance opposes current flow, and we know potential difference leads to more current flow, so there must be some relationship between resistance, current flow, and potential difference. And there is. This was put together by George Ohm in the formula resistance equals potential difference over current. Get the right units if you use ohms for resistance, volts for potential difference, and amps for current. And you can rearrange that to suit what you're looking for. If you're looking for current flow, it's potential difference divided by resistance. If you're looking for potential difference, it's current flow times resistance. What it's really saying is the current flowing through a conductor or resistor is proportional to the potential difference across the device and inversely proportional to the resistance of the device. Let's see how we can apply this. The current in a wire is 24 amperes when connected to a 1.5 volt battery. Find the resistance of the wire. Well, if we're looking for resistance, resistance equals potential difference divided by current flow which is going to be 1.5 volts over 24 amps, which gives us 0.0625 ohms. Very straightforward application of Ohm's Law. If we take another example, in a simple electric circuit, a 24 ohm resistor is connected across a 6 volt battery. What is the current in the circuit? Well, now we're looking for current so current equals potential difference divided by resistance, which is going to be 6 volts, substituting in with units, divided by 24 ohms, or 0 0.25 amps, or 250 milliamps. Again, another straightforward application of Ohm's law. Here we have a couple graphs where it tells us a constant potential difference is applied across a variable resistor held at constant temperature. So constant temperature and we can change the resistance. Which graph shows you what happens to the current as you adjust the resistance? Well, if we've got a constant potential difference, we're using the equation as a guide. Current flow equals potential difference divided by R. Potential difference is going to be constant. We're going to adjust R. So it's pretty easy to see that as R gets bigger, current must, gets, must get smaller. And that's going to be an inverse relationship. Therefore, we can say that this must be answer 1. We have this nice inverse relationship trend that's proportional to 1 over the resistance. Another sample problem. What is the current in a 100 ohm resistor connected to a 0.4 volt source of potential difference? Well, if we're looking for current flow, I equals V over R, or 0 0.4 volts over 100 ohms is going to be 0 0.004 amps, or 4 milliamps. Answer, 4. Now, important to keep in mind is that Ohm's law isn't truly a law of physics. It's an empirical relationship that holds for quite a few different materials. But not all materials obey Ohm's law in all circumstances. Materials which do obey, which do obey Ohm's law are known as ohmic materials. And if something's ohmic, what you'll see is a graph when you plot current flow and voltage where you get a straight line. And the slope of that line, remember slope is going to be rise over run, and if we look here, rise over run is going to be change in potential over change in current flow. Well, that's going to give you V over I, that's going to give you your resistance. So the slope of that plot will give you the resistance itself. And if it's linear, it's an ohmic material. It's following Ohm's law. Let's see how we can apply this. Here we have a graph showing the relationship between the potential difference across the resistor and the current flow through the resistor. During which interval does the resistor obey Ohm's law? Well, if you'll recall, 
Materials that are ohmic, that obey Ohm's law, have a linear current and voltage relationship. The only place this happens is here on that BC section. So, the interval over which the resistor obeys Ohm's law would be interval BC. Now, we'll use Ohm's law much, much, much more as we go analyzing series, parallel, and combination circuits. It's going to be a very, very useful function for us. For now, though, if you're having trouble, need more help looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.